if the events of this past week were to communicate one thing loud and clear, it is that the time for Glass-Steagall national banking and NAWAPA has come. But with Barack Obama in the White House, the time that still exists to enact those policies may be swiftly cut short by the thermonuclear conflict with Russia that Obama is committed to. Just yesterday, Russian Prime Minister Medvedev warned unequivocally that nations seeking to usurp the national sovereignty of any nation, especially theirs, that nuclear war is indeed on the table for any such violation. Это реалии, с которыми мы все должны считаться, и государственной власти придется дать на этот запрос свой, надеюсь, эффективный ответ. Доктрина государственного суверенитета, она не должна размываться, даже если это удобно для достижения каких-то текущих политических целей, вплоть до цели избраться на соответствующую позицию. Это просто опасно для мирового порядка. А примеров посягательств на доктрину суверенитета в последние годы было очень немало. Чего стоят и военные операции против иностранных государств в обход Организации Объединенных Наций, заявление о том, что тот или иной политический режим потерял легитимность, причем заявление со стороны иностранных государств, а не со стороны народа соответствующей страны, введение всяческих коллективных санкций – в обход международных институтов. Все это не улучшает ситуацию в мире, а последствия скоропалительных военных операций в иностранных государствах обычно заканчиваются одним – приходом к власти радикалов. Я уже не говорю, что в какой-нибудь момент такие действия, которые подрывают государственный суверенитет, могут закончиться вполне себе такой полноценной региональной войной и даже, никого не хочу пугать, с применением ядерного оружия. Об этом должны помнить все. This statement is an obvious message directed to the Obama administration indirectly and the financial power that controls it. Since the illegal war launched in Libya last year and even the more unlawful assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, the administration has done nothing but show a disgusting abuse of executive power and criminal disregard for domestic and international law, a disregard that nations like Russia and even high-level U.S. military officials view as threats to national sovereignty. Russia has repeatedly stated that that is the issue over military intervention in Syria and Iran, sovereignty. That is the issue at stake with all the threats occurring at this point. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's what's at stake with the joint U.S.-NATO anti-ballistic missile system being built in Europe aimed at Russia. Despite Obama's irrational commitment to war, saner elements in the United States have mounted in and around the U.S. military. Specifically, Representative Walter Jones and his push for legislation HCR 107 declares that any president who launches war without congressional approval would be immediately subject to impeachment. This was followed by Senator Jim Webb in a restatement he made on the same point in the Senate in his piece of legislation S-3176 to try to stop a preemptive illegal war. So far they stand virtually alone and that in and of itself increases the danger of nuclear war. While Jones's and Webb's legislation is despicably still outstanding in both houses of Congress, the U.S. House of Representatives has passed a resolution on Iran that moves the United States much closer to a war footing against Iran. And as many experts and diplomats like Dan Shapiro, the envoy to Israel from the United States, warn, America is ready to attack. The non-binding resolution, H.R. 568, that overwhelmingly passed 401 to 11, effectively calls for a military attack on Iran when it obtains nuclear weapons capability. The vague interpretation already applies to Iran and actually any other country with a civilian nuclear program and comes at a time when Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak is actively urging the international community to increase pressure on Syria as he says, to strike a further blow to Iran. 
Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, former chief of staff for the Secretary of State Colin Powell, warned that this resolution reads like the same sheet music that got us into the Iraq war and could be the precursor for a war with Iran. It's effectively a thinly disguised effort to bless war. General Wilkerson is right, and if his and others' warnings are not heeded, whether it's concerning Iran, Syria, or Russia directly, the United States will have violated the rights of a sovereign nation, whose consequences were spelled out by Medvedev yesterday. Those consequences being a thermonuclear war, threatening the annihilation of the entire human species. That is President Obama's commitment. Therefore, there is no discussion of war avoidance policy that does not include removing Barack Obama from office. We have been warned, and the way things are looking now, we will not get another one. The British Empire's game, run through U.S. President Barack Obama, has been called out by the Russian government. They do not want it, but if pushed, will go to war. It will be thermonuclear war. Therefore, what humanity faces in light of the Obama administration's go-ahead to make the ballistic missile defense system operational based on the completion of phase one on May 20th is possible extinction. Is it inevitable? Only if Barack Obama is not taken out of power. Because if Obama succeeds in his mad drive to force Russia into thermonuclear confrontation, there can be no economic recovery, domestic or international. There will be, possibly, no humanity left on the face of this earth. And we are trying to Your life depends target. on the constitutional elimination of his power. Today, on May 17th, Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev, in the presence of U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, reiterated Russia's position that the drive coming from the U.S., acting as the geopolitical muscle of the British royal family, can easily lead to nuclear confrontation. Medvedev stated, There have been many recent examples of the concept of state sovereignty being undermined. Military operations against foreign states bypassing the United Nations declarations of illegitimacy of certain political regimes. This does not improve the situation in the world while rash military interference in the affairs of another state usually results in radicals coming to power. Such actions which undermine state sovereignty can easily lead to full-scale regional war, even, I am not trying to scare anyone here, with the use of nuclear weapons. Member of the LaRouche Pack endorsed national slate of congressional candidates, Keisha Rogers of the 22nd District of Texas, delivered a sharp message on May 15th while organizing on the ground in Texas that the threat of thermonuclear confrontation with Russia, which we just heard Medvedev warn about, can only be stopped with the nullifying of Obama's powers. And I will just say that the message that's being sent from Russia and from what we're seeing uh, with the attempts and the drive toward World War III is very clear to Russia and very clear to our U.S. military. The solution is we have to get Obama out now. We have to stop this collapse. And everything that you have, you have to put into this fight. Let's send a message, clear message to the White House. Obama must go. Let's take the nation back. And we can win this fight for, for mankind. Thank you. As it stands, Barack Obama has been rejected by the American people. There is no response that will come from this administration on the collapse of the entire world financial system. All American citizens can expect from the Obama party is a showdown of thermonuclear confrontation with Russia. Do we wish to survive? That is the question. Don't simply tell yourself, yes, you want to live. 
do what will enable us to live and implement the package to turn the situation around. Dump Obama. Dump him now.